do dry solder as you can see here for example for these ports we have usb connectors and the audio connectors if you have any dry solder or a terminal that is not connected perfectly to the motherboard you can have a problem with your motherboards okay this connector or ports can be usb connector can be the vga connector can be a connector for the touchpad or for the keyboard for the screen etc that's why you should check the soldering state in your motherboard especially for the ports and connectors this is also one of common faults that you can encounter in fed laptops motherboards okay especially for the power jack okay if you have problem or a dry solder in the power jack the laptop or the motherboard will be a dead motherboard you cannot get no power no light in the motherboard or in the laptop so that's why you should check the soldering in the terminals especially for the power jack of course for the power jack and for other ports now we're gonna see the CMOS battery okay the CMOS battery as you can see the CMOS battery is usually about 3.3 volt as you can see this is the CMOS battery connector you will find two pins or two terminals one ground and one high terminal okay so this is a kind of CMOS battery here we have two files as you can see red and black wire there is many types of CMOS battery okay so for this CMOS battery it has just 2.4 volts okay but usually you will find 3.3 volt in CMOS batteries okay so the CMOS batteries are very important in every motherboard for the laptop or for the desktop okay because the CMOS battery keeps the data the configuration saved in the ICH as you can see here we have another type of the CMOS battery as you can see okay this is a big one as you can see here we have in this connector plus and minus so I will show you the plus and the minus so let's zoom in a little bit as you can see now it's clear we have plus here and we have minus here as you can see okay so this is 3.3 volts battery okay as i told you this battery is responsible to keep data and configuration about the cmos chip saved okay even if you unplug the computer okay here we have the plus terminal and here we have the minus terminal okay so let's insert the battery so always as i told you if you understand one motherboard you can understand every laptop motherboard whatever its type is it old or newer etc because the working principle is the same as you can see this is the positive terminal here and as you can see the CMOS battery also is usually near to the ICH okay as you can see so CMOS battery the ICH the BIOS chip and the DSIO are usually near to each other okay so here we have another motherboard as you can see the same working principle we have here the CMOS battery slot as you can see here this is the negative terminal and here we have the positive terminals and here we have the ICH and this is the crystal oscillator of course you will find a crystal near to the ICH as you can see the crystal near to the ICH and near to the CMOS battery here we have the XY or X1 or Y1 okay the reference for crystals is X or Y okay so in some motherboards you will find x and in others y okay always you will find the CMOS battery not near to the ICH and the ICH is always near to the SIO and the BIOS chip okay 
this is a good information as you can see here this is the connector for the CMOS battery this the CMOS battery for this motherboard is removed so this is the connector as you can see here we have the ICH as you can see here okay so the ICH this is the BIOS and this is the SIO as you can see the four components is near to each other okay the CMOS battery the ICH, the BIOS, and the Super IO. Okay, so usually the four components are next to each other. As you can see, also for this motherboard, as you can see, we have the CMOS or battery slot, the ICH, the BIOS, okay, and this is the Super IO. So I try to teach you the basics and the working principle. Okay. So here we have the BIOS as you can see. This is the Super IO as you can see here, and this is the CMOS battery. And now we're going to see another fault that you can encounter in some fed laptops, especially a D laptops, is some blown ICs. Okay. So that's why you should always do a Vasian inspection for your motherboards before proceeding or going ahead and checking other chunks. You should always do a Vasian inspection because you can find a blown IC. If you find a blown IC, means the IC is damaged or MOSFETs or any component means you should replace that component with another component with a serviceable one now i will show you an example of blown ic that i find when i do a vision inspection so this is a motherboard as you can see where we have a blown ic as you can see this is basically an ic as you can see here do you see this hole? This is a problem. This IC is blurred out, as you can see. Now this IC is damaged. So that's why you should always begin with a visual inspection. Because if you have an IC like, the, like this, you should change it automatically. But if you don't did a video inspection, you can just make measurement and check from here to here without finding the problem. So that's why the video inspection is a very important step before doing any things. Now we are gonna talk about the electrostatic. You know electrostatic? The electrostatic can cause a bad motherboard or a failed laptop. The electrostatic is the residual current or voltage that can be holded by some component in the motherboard, especially capacitors. So when you want to switch on the power, the laptop, it will not be on. No power. You can get no power or no data because there is a problem with electrostatic. So you should discharge this electrostatic or this residual current by removing all sources of power. For the laptop, you should remove the battery and the adapter and also the CMOS battery and then press the power button about 13 seconds and then release it and then Put back the CMOS battery, the battery for the laptop, and if you want the adapter, and switch on the laptop. So the electrostatic can cause a failure in laptop. Another common fault that you can encounter in laptop motherboard is the problem of the HDD or hard disk drive. So when you have a problem with your hard disk drive, the laptop can be powered on, but you will get no data in the screen. Okay, no data. Okay, so that's why you should check the HDD. As you can see here, we have the HDD connector. OK, 
Okay, this is the SATA connector or serial ATR connector, as you can see here. So let's zoom in a little bit. As you can see, so here this, this is the SATA connector for the HDD or for the hard disk drive. Of course, the same working principle for the HDD or ACCD, the solid state drive. So as you see, sometimes when you move your laptop or you the laptop is full you can get no data in your laptop that's why you should always check the, your hard disk drive okay you can find it you can find it like this if the hard disk drive is disconnected from the motherboard as you can see you can get no data in your motherboard in your laptop that's why you should always check the hard disk drive the hard disk drive should be connected or mated to the motherboard so this is also one of the common fault that i controlled a fan laptops so as i told you especially when you have no data in your laptop you should check the the hard disk drive okay and when you have nothing in the screen just a black screen you should check the bios you should check the random access memory and so on okay and sometimes the cmos battery should remove and install back the cmos battery okay so the hard disk drive can cause this kind of problems no data in the laptop that's why you should check it now we're going to see the usb connector or universal serial bus connector so among the common faults that you can encounter in a dead motherboards or failed motherboards is a bad usb connector the same working principle this connector contain the ground D plus 5 volt, do D minus and D plus. I mean data plus and data minus. When this pins inside this USB connector is broken or bended or damaged, you can get a, a failed motherboard, especially when two pins touch each other. The same working principle also for other connectors like RG. 45 as you can see this is rg45 it contains about eight pins or eight terminals the terminals should be good should not be damaged or bended if you have any parts that is damaged you should replace it i'm going to show you a damaged part so a damaged rg45 part as you can see here in the sides in the right side as you can see two terminals that touch each other as you can see at the major parts this pin can be bended if there is a bended pin this can make a short circuit in the motherboard and then the laptop cannot be operated or you can even get a d laptop so as you can see here this connector is for the, the fan for the cpu okay it contains three pins so always you should pay attention for these connectors especially the connectors that contain pins but for this kind of connector for example for the hdd as you can see it doesn't contain pins but it contain a metal terminal also these terminals can be bended or broken okay that's why always you should check the connectors in the motherboards a bad connector can cause a short circuit the same for the memory slots as you can see as you can see sometimes you can find a bad memory memory slot if you have a bad memory slot the laptop cannot be operated or you can get no power in the laptop the same working principle this is the network the network card slot as you can see do you see these terminals this should be like should be clean and should be good 
Here also, this is the connector for the power jack. Okay, so for this kind of laptop, it it has this kind of connector that is connected directly to the power jack via a cable. Okay, so you should always check or do a visual inspection for the all connectors in the motherboard. Okay. So the connectors can cause a D laptop motherboard and can cause, of course, short circuits. When there is a bended pin, for example, a ground pin that, that touch a power rail, it can cause, of course, a short circuit. So I will show you right now some connectors some bad connectors as you can see for this this is a screen connector so this screen is this connector is for the screen or the monitor as you can see here we have about two bended pins as you can see two bended pins so this connector should be repeated as you can see this bended pin are touch each other so we can get here a short circuit especially when do two pins that touch each other is ground and plus five volt for example or plus three volt etc okay so you should all always pay attention i get many motherboards with this kind of problems as you can see here in the image abandoned pins and this connector so you should always do a Vesian inspection. That's why I, sh I told to you that the Vesian inspection is very important before checking other things. You should first do a Vesian inspection. So as you can see in this motherboard, this is basically an old motherboard, but I find that this connector, as you can see, is damaged as you can see this is a banded pins as you can see here do you see banded pins this is a bad connector okay if you don't do a visa inspection inspection you cannot find out this kind of failure 